I just drove the grain cart and the tractor for the first time by myself. I on the trailer. I just had to document that. Well, we don't have wheat to cut in Kimball, but we found a farmer on the side of the road, so we're getting in his truck at the elevator. It's not sketchy because we're farmers, right? <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> So I got to go ride in a Kloss Combine and they use a case header and then they have, you know, their grain cart with a smaller grain cart and it was super cool to see all of inside of how this works and I'll explain a little bit more later. I've only ever ridden in a John Deere Combine, but I'm also going to show you what Sawfly does to wheat. So Sawfly is a little pest here. We'll freeze the screen right here. So Sawfly is a little bug that lays eggs in the base of the wheat to my understanding and then when it harvests, all the little eggs hatch and then that breaks the stock clean off so i'll show you the difference between the stock that was cut by softly and one that was cut by the header and what we're trying to show you here is all the dust that they leave inside of that stock so here is an example of softly damage you can see that straight across cut and then once i show you the ones that were cut by the header those have you know tears they're not as evenly cut because of the sickle knives right right there see that's not a straight cut across And then I did a little quick walk around of the Klaus Combine. I don't have too much to explain here. I'm just kind of showing you guys that are already familiar with Combines, what this looks like, some differences it has compared to the John Deere Combine. I didn't get too into detail with the walk around, just kind of a general in the back, you know, like the spreader choppers kind of thing. I thought it was cool to see the differences because it is different than the S770s that we run. He did say that compared to the gleaners that they ran last year that this machine was quite a bit heavier where the gleaner was like kind of floating around. This was leaving ruts and such in some softer ground that they had last year. So they are pretty heavy from what I've heard. So the Klaus combine that I'm in right now, uh, the driver said that it was comparable to a 9600 series John Deere combine with a double, a twin rotor, I believe is what he said. I still don't know a ton about combines, but the inside of the cab, I can tell you about that. Look at all the light buttons. Can you turn all of them on? The AC is up there. And John Deere, it's like all on this side of the machine. So um, that's how it looks different. The uh, little control is a little different the first thing that i thought when i got in this was like it it's a lot like the jaguar choppers i haven't been in other class choppers but the jaguar choppers was very similar to how the seat is set up how the buddy seat is so and i guess that's just kind of like the thing with all equipment brands like it's gonna have similar seats and buddy seats because you know that's just how things are but it's still cool to be like, oh, I recognize these seats because I've been in other equipment, but. That's what inside the bin looks like. It's kind of deeper, so you can't really see it too good right now, but it's deeper and then it's taller. Um, I'm pretty sure that our S770 still hold more, but I'm not sure. It's been really cool because I've only ridden in one John Deere combine. That's the only combine I've ridden in. It was our S770. So the fact that I get to like, you know, we just saw them on the side of the road in the town we were looking for acres to cut in and, you know, then we met up with them later that night and we're talking more with them and then we're like, hey, can we come ride in your tractor and combine tomorrow? And they're like, sure thing. And so we, they kept us updated today and just come let us ride. In Nebraska, it always seems like I'm always in someone else's equipment learning because they're willing to teach you. So shout out to the Nebraska folks. Y'all are the real homies. So we're running through. This is, we're doing end rows right now, headlands, whatever y'all want to call those. And the header is pretty full, right? Like you would guess that's yielding more than 20 bushels right now, but because of the freeze damage, the heads don't get fully developed and they don't like have as many berries in them. So it's not as good wheat. Like it might look good from the road. It might look good going in the header, but when it's getting crashed, is not as good as everyone wants it to be and this is only like one of the problems they've had within wheat this year like some people just have drought some people just got the freeze damage and they also have soft fly here and i'll show you guys a little bit of what that does to wheat it chops it like right at the base and it's a straight cut and then they'll it's a whole thing you'll get to see it um so they have freeze drought soft fly and then 
you know, expecting it to be good wheat because all of the inputs soared up this year and then it is not as good as they needed it to be. So there's a lot more financial stress on farmers and then there's a lot of other issues going on in the world right now that is a lot of more stress on the agricultural industry and where your food is getting produced and all that stuff. So that's just a small piece in Nebraska that they're getting to deal with this year, which is really unfortunate. Another example, here we'll show you the monitor this time, but like we had to slow down to get this stuff and it's like kind of laying down and we don't know if that's from the saw fly or from it just getting dry, but that's what the monitor looks like for all that coming in. So it's 10.4 moisture, 26 bushels of acre, and that's, yeah. You would think that that's yielding more with how much it's bringing in. All right, and just for the record, I got out of my IVT transmission tractor and used a clutch very choppily, but we done did it. <laughs> well, we found some wheat to cut in Nebraska, so we uh, unloaded. We're getting ready to go out to the field. I just got a new beacon because mine fell off in Oklahoma and I ran over it, so it was a little busted, so we're gonna put this on right there. And then we're just gonna tighten it down so it doesn't fall off again. That should be solid. Stay up there, buddy. And beacons are just used as another way of communicating with people that we are moving and going slow. That will do the little flashies, so. That's why we use beacons. Pookie, you messed it up. Yeah, I didn't even, we didn't even open the square. There you go. Spray some good old brake cleaner. Yeah. Ready to go. Header is on. Wheels are turned. That's what it looks like when my tractor's flashing. So you got lights right there, right there, right there. I'm pretty sure on the back. I'll turn that beacon on and show you guys. I still have to put that little step up. Um, I don't think there's any back here, but we do have a yield sign and that needs to be facing out if you're going, I think under like 40 miles an hour. I might be wrong on that, but when we're on the road and we're hauling the grain cart on the trailer, we flip that inside so that this metal piece is showing instead of the colored because we're going, you know, highway speeds with the trailer. So that's road mode. So this button is what turns my movers on and off. I'm pretty sure that's the beacon. I'm going to go check if that works in a minute. And then another cool thing while I'm moving is that I have a camera on the back of my grain cart. I'll actually show you guys where that's at too. But I can see on the road if there's cars behind me so I know when to get over and when to tell the combines that there's cars coming. And that's really handy because the combines can't see too good. Like they can see you in your mirrors, in their mirrors, and they kind of know when stuff is coming. But if I'm telling them like, hey, there's a semi coming and they just can get over sooner and then they have a heads up if they have to get over in the ditch or if they can't get over in the ditch when the semi's passing them. A heads up is always nice. And then right now, this auger is straight down, so there's this little step kind of in there, a little ladder for it to rest on. So I'm gonna lift that auger up a little bit. And there's power lines right there, so I gotta be careful. I'm not gonna... Oh, I should clear them. I'm not gonna touch it. Well, I'm gonna touch it, but... I'm gonna move a little bit so that I can fully extend the auger without um, hitting the power lines. There's Lukey Pookie. I think he's doing it for me. I'll get out. Oh, there we go. He just pulled a little clip in there. Thank you! <laughs> and then we can put the auger down. So it's gonna rest on that deck and it just makes it a little easier on the auger for it to come up and down as much as it does like so, and then we're gonna angle it down, and that way it doesn't hit the header in the field, and we are good to go. Oh, I gotta show you guys my beacon. So, the beacon light is on, and the beacon is not working. I'll probably figure that out later, but I don't think it's been working 
all year, so I have never turned it on. We just have our movers on. The combines have beacons that they always have on though. But that about, oh, and my video camera for my green card. So you get out of the tractor, you run to the back. And that camera is sitting right up there, giving a good old little clean up because she's a little dirty. So that points directly, you know, back here. And I can see if you're behind me. Sometimes I miss it though because the camera quality is kind of crappy. So if like there's a car behind me and then there's a car passing me, sometimes I just whoop because but I'm not just watching the camera. So we have to move the pivot since the tires are in the wheat. You know, the pivot is over the wheat. Watch out for snakes. Oh, this scares me. Oh, gross. Um, so we're gonna hope that it starts moving this way. Ah! I think it's in this box. Mmm. Nice. This one is fancy, so we're gonna hope that it, uh... Mm. Well, turns out you just hit the start button. I even had to call boss man out here and be like, I can't turn the pivot on. And then we turn that to that and then push that button. I don't know. I guess if you push buttons enough, something works, right? And then in case you didn't know, this is straw. And that is what they use for like cow bedding. Sometimes I think they supplement feed with it. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Well, Lucas brought me a Dr. Pepper and a hot spicy McChicken and a McDouble, and he's gonna finish moving that. So I don't know how many of you have ridden in a tractor, how many of you haven't for long hours of the day, but <laughs> I really love when I get raw food. I'm just trying, I'm trying to share the experiences that I have with you guys. Fast food and tractors do not mix because once the person getting the food goes to town, gets all the other parts and stuff that they need and then comes back to the field and then eventually gets to your equipment. Your food is cold. It's like, definitely not a fresh out of the drive through experience that you have within your vehicle, you know, it like comes right out the window and then it's in your mouth. But I think people forget about that sometimes. Um, it's not something you think about. But like I said, I am very grateful for people that bring us food. Amber is really good about that. She always brings dinner out to the field. She's not here this week though, it's kind of sad. It's actually really sad because Amber is so fun and she brings us lots of food all the time and she like makes the food. <sighs> that woman is heaven sent. Thank you, Amber. But today, McChickens <laughs> from McDonald's that are crunchy and <laughs> not even like lukewarm anymore are you gonna have to do. Just something you don't think about when you see people in the field. Don't get french fries, they'll be rock hard before they get to you. Just a word to the wise. <laughs> Okay guys, we're in Kimball, Nebraska. And we stopped to see Dakota, we'll just get her four hits in it. <laughs> we're at the Shoot 7 bar. I got a little ear tag from them. This is the coolest bar we've been to. They have really good food. So, oh I signed the ceiling towel. Look at that. 
Acre Girl is here, 43560 Ag with Emma. That's me. And they even have a big old, look at that. So, this is the first time we've been here and it was kind of just a stop to be like, well, we hope we get something and we did get something. And Alex, he's already in my YouTube video. I didn't ask him if that was okay, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> Freaking Tricky showed up. Dakota is better than Alex. Dakota is really cool. She likes us. We like Dakota. This has been our favorite stop probably. Probably will come next year. Cannot not come next year, so. Shoe seven. Bye Dakota. <laughs> Moving day sunrises, you ready to go boys? Pookie. <laughs> Pookie. <laughs> We're only taking the stripper headers and the crew trailer today and some crazy hair because um, it's supposed to be 102 with really high winds. So uh, tomorrow's supposed to be like 81 degrees and that's a lot better to move in. So we might move tomorrow or Sunday. So we'll take that air compressor, the grain cart, two combines, the service truck, some stinky 40 year old men. Isn't that right? Right? What? Right? <laughs> so that's all I have for today. So remember, if you like this video, to like, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever you want to. Nikki, say hasta hey, la pasta. Hey, awesome. Say hasta la pasta. Hey, hasta la pasta. <laughs> As always, hasta la pasta. <laughs>